Hey guys, welcome to your fourth C Sharp tutorial. Um, in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to declare variables and store values in those variables and how, how you can um, use them to print them out. And in this tutorial, I want to show you an interesting thing that you can do with them, and that's um, getting user input to be stored inside of them. So let's start with a statement like string s equals, and we're going to actually set this equal to the console.readLine method. Let me let me go ahead and put the other read line method in there. Now what this is actually going to do is once the program starts running, it's going to create this variable, a string variable called s. And it's going to wait for you to type something in your keyboard. As soon as you type it in the keyboard and then you hit the enter button, it's going to take whatever you typed out and it's going to store it in that variable s as a string. And so then I can actually come down and print it out. Let's see, console dot uh, right line s, and I can actually print out whatever I just typed. So I'm just going to put, oh, uh, oops, um, let's put like my name is Ryan because that's my name. And then it came down. It stored that string, my name is Ryan, that I typed out into that string variable, and then it skipped this line because it's blank. Obviously, I just put it there for um, space so it looks nicer. And then it came down to this console.writeLine s, and it took whatever I stored in that s, which is what I typed out, the my name is Ryan, and then it reprinted it out on the screen for us. And now it's actually waiting for me to hit the enter button again, obviously because we did the console.readLine. And now you can actually do this same thing. I'm going to rename this x because I don't like using the letter s for my integers. But, and um, you can do it for integers too, but see how it's um, it is underline that's because if I were to compile this it would give me an error and the reason being is that whenever you do console.readline and you type something out it's actually um, whatever you type out even if I typed out the number 5 or 172 it takes that 172 but it stores it as um, it reads it as a string literal which is whatever you set a string to a string literal is basically just anything inside of a double quote and you can't set a double quote equal to an integer or like a long or a decimal point number, like a double or a float. And so what you actually have to do is you have to go in here and do int dot parse, parse, parse. And then um, now this, see it's highlighted the first um, parenthesis here is going to the very last one because inside this parse it's going to take whatever we type and I'm going to actually type out a number, not a letter, because if you type out letters, it will give you a, um, a runtime error, um, which is no good, so bueno. Um, so you have console.readline, and you're going to type out like 156 or something, and then it will take that 156 string, and then the int.parse method takes that string, and it turns it into an integer value, and once you turn that string into an integer value, you can store that into your new variable called x. And so I actually have to come down here and change that to x also. Um, so then it's going to... So let me go ahead and run this and type something out, and then I'll explain it again, just so it doesn't um, get too tricky. Okay, so I typed in 172. Now, in the actual... this um, The uh, command prompt is what this is called, just for those of you that know Windows pretty well. It takes that 172 that I typed, and it's basically thinking, okay, so he typed... I have to close this first. So he typed out 172, and it... Oh my gosh, what is this doing? Okay. He typed out 172. Okay, so that's what it's reading it as. But what I want it to read it as is just a simple 172. I want it to read it as 172 on the right and not the 172 on the left. So what the, in, the parse... Um, value does, or the parse method, sorry, um, it takes this string that is reading a 172 and it just basically just magically changes it into the number 172. And that's basically what that does. So I'm just going to go ahead and compile that again just so I can show you again and explain it one more time because it's really important that you understand what's going on. 172. Okay. Again, this is reading as a string. Once it goes into that int, the int.parse method, it's taking the 172 string, turning it into an integer value, storing it in the x, 
and then it gets to the console.write line, and then it printed out that 172 as an integer, um, which is the second one, and now it's waiting me for to waiting for me to hit enter because of that console.read line. Um, you can do the same exact thing with a double, except you have to do double dot parse. Whatever data type you're using, you have to use the name of the data type dot parse. It works for any of them. Um, so if I type a 5.575, it'll do the same thing, except instead of ta instead of changing the string into an integer, it changes it into a double. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this tutorial because that is a nifty tool and I know it can be somewhat confusing for people, especially if you're just now learning the language, but it's very important for um, things because user input drives a program. If you make a program and you don't have any kind of user input in it, then it's going to be dull, boring, and no one's going to want to look at it except for you because you made it for a specific purpose. But if you can in, um, implement user input, then anyone's going to be able to use it if they need to depending on what it does so um, in the next tutorial I am probably going to be talking to you guys about um, words that can modify your variables and I'll have to explain that in the next tutorial but until then I'll see you guys later